The story you're about to see is an epic, a search that ended with a revelation that no home entertainment system will ever be enough. Because after you've heard the ultimate home theater, a room custom built, acoustically tuned to feel harmonic perfection with a price tag pushing a million bucks, there is no going back. I've seen my own shadow on the Best Buy walls. I've tasted the forbidden fruit. And I'm hooked. CES, an annual Vegas pilgrimage to a gadget show with a floor that's roughly the size of Tulsa, Oklahoma. Filled, crammed with electronics. You'd think that after a couple of days here, we'd stumble across the ultimate home theater setup. Sure, we found a speaker system that costs as much as a house, but mostly, we found ourselves in serious need of a break. Which is physically impossible. But then we got an invitation from high-end audio company Goldman to see what they promised was the ultimate home theater. Now, unless you're a Saudi prince or Mark Cuban, you probably haven't heard of Goldman. The starting price for their Reference 2 turntable is $300,000. The man behind this madness? Michel Revachon, the Geneva-based CEO whose flagship product you won't find in a box or a Best Buy. For a couple of million, he'll build you an entire home theater, literally build you the entire room. And lunch would be a test drive of one of those rooms. And because it's tough to move an entire room to Las Vegas, I was going to Los Angeles. I don't care if Goldman was unveiling a goldfish bowl. When someone offers you a ride on a Gulfstream G3, you say yes. 53 minutes later, we pull up outside the closest thing Goldman has for a storefront, a house in Cushy Tarzana, whose only residents are electronic. After Michelle gives us some prep talk, we first test out a fairly traditional setup, a two-channel stereo system. We have about a million dollars of Goldman audio equipment. Frequency ranges are independently amplified and the speakers are grounded to the earth, you know, to prevent any unwanted vibration from that Michael Buble album. And this was lunch, also in high fidelity. But it was the media room we were all waiting for thanks in part to Michelle's enthusiastic teasing on the plane ride over. We have developed a model, software model, which runs in a secret room in a computer in Geneva, and that calculates each room. It takes more than a day in calculation. It's a simulation with taking speakers, putting speakers, giving them different frequency response, different phase response, different time response, different directivity, etc., and simulate the room each time and select the best solution. When a door slam on your back, in a film, it slams at 100 dB peak. In my room, it slams at 130 dB peak. And I can tell you, people jump, okay? So as I walked into the media room, I was ready to be wowed. By the room's 13,000 watts of power spread across a frequency range that spans from an earth-moving five hertz all the way up to 50 kilohertz just in case the neighborhood dogs are watching. In fact, the room sports a two-ton concrete ceiling, capping what's essentially a massive instrument, specially constructed to keep all that sound energy from blowing the room apart. Most ceilings, if you have a big membrane like that and the kind of pressures that we're getting here, it'll act like a drum. It'll flex yeah. with, the, with the sound. And then, of course, there's the system itself. 52 drivers, discreetly hidden, playing movies in a 32-channel remix of the traditional 5.1 surround sound. Goldman's processors do all this remixing on the fly. But none of that really matters. What counts is what it actually looks and sounds like. And there's no way to explain it or to capture it here and to show it to you over the internet. But I'll say this. The moment the movie started playing, all the tech, the numbers, the power figures, I forgot them all. The five minutes of movie we watched I can honestly say it was the most thrilling theater experience I've ever had, anywhere, IMAX included. And this was watching Pearl Harbor. Pearl Harbor! What I thought was a shockingly bad movie suddenly seemed really good. What we're trying to achieve is a participatory experience so that the viewer 
feels like they are a part of the action, a part of the, uh, the movie experience. You are grabbed by the film. You are not watching it, criticizing it, loving it, enjoying it anymore. You are in it. That's the difference. That's what makes the difference. Well, it's not the only difference. There's also the ticket price. For a mere mortal such as myself, this might be one addiction I just can't afford. For Switched, I'm Ben.